Happy Hump Day. We got a full show for you today. Some day baseball. Let's get after it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I am your host, Steven, and we are back, baby. It is Hump Day. I got more best bets, more research help for Wednesday, July 19th. We went two and two yesterday, kind of whatever. I'm ready for a sweep. I'm sick of these av- average two and two, one and one, one and two type of days. It is time, baby. I think a three and zero oh sweep is coming today. Uh, we had a wild, historic day yesterday in baseball. For the first time since 1894, four games ended with both teams scoring ten or more runs. That is just crazy. Eleven teams total scored ten or more runs yesterday. The weather is heating up, baby. That's right. It is time for runs, runs, and more runs in baseball. Uh, we got a full 15-game slate for you today. In this video, we got good hitter matchups, good pitcher matchups, the pitcher report, and three more best bets. Uh, tomorrow for Thursday, I will have the bullpen report out, the top five and bottom five ERA, ERAs and Sierras for the last 30 days. And then Friday, we're going to add who's on fire to all this, too. So we got some good things coming up. And uh, I'm ready to roll. But before we do, smash that like button. We only had 173 likes the last time I saw on our YouTube video. We can get over 200. I know we can do it. Uh, Subscribe to the channel because we are so close to 5,000 subscribers. That's right. We are. Not just me. We are. For all you guys that supported since the beginning, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Leave a comment. Let me know your best bet for Wednesday. We got some day baseball, baby. So get those bets in early today. All right, that's all I got. I'm ready to roll. I got my caffeine in me. Let's go. Bets recap page. There it is. Two and two day. Orioles money line. Holy crap. Was that a terrible bet? Uh, They got rocked. Absolutely rocked. I need a break from the Orioles because everything I bet on them has just turned to crap lately. Uh, Harper and Seager, one plus hit each. A little dramatic. Harper got it in like the fourth or fifth inning. Corey Seager struck out his first at bat, struck out his second, struck out his third. And then in his final at bat, he hits a three run bomb to win it. I love it. And then Padres' first five money line. That was a no sweat win. That was a nice, easy winner there. And then that was a terrible added bet. Wu struggled. He had the worst outing of his season, of course, when I first bet on him this year. Um, so though that did not hit. 22 and 14 run now. Two and two day. Just lost a little bit of juice at minus 0.2. Uh, for the season, 172 and 166 up four. Point two three units. It's time to turn it around and get a sweep. Let's get back on track. Before we get into the hitter, pitcher matchups, and all that, let's check out the promo with Thrive Fantasy. There it is, guys. Luis Castillo, over a half a strikeout is your free square today. I just had someone sign up in the Discord and win their first parlay, so that was pretty awesome to see. 100% first deposit match up to $250 for new users, but you have to use the promo code JABO or the link below. It's a great deal, guys. Use this free square. Add it to anything you guys want. You can make a two-leg parlay, three-leg parlay, four or five. That's how much you get. Three-leg parlay, you get 5.2 times your bet. That's a pretty dang good deal. Um, And I have a nice little strikeout player prop that you can add to that free square and maybe get a nice winner today. So eligible in over 30 states, use that promo code JABO. I know you guys have heard this before. But this is a great deal. It's free money to start out, guys. You just get free money. It's pretty cool. So, anyways, that's Thrive Fantasy. Now it's time for the good hitter matchups. All right, let's go. We got six good hitter matchups for you today. And it starts with Mr. George Springer of the Blue Jays. Nine for 22. Two doubles and three bombs versus you, Darvish. And then we got Brandon Belt of the Blue Jays. Six for 18. One double and two bombs versus Darvish. And then we move over to Chicago. We got Yasmani Grandal of the White Sox, 4 for 12, one home run versus Justin Verlander. And then Manny Machado of the Padres, 5 for 12, one home run versus Jose Barrios. And then Jose Ramirez of the Guardians, 6 for 11, two doubles and one home run versus Rich Hill, Dick Mountain, Rich Over the Hill, whatever you want to call him. And then Cody Bellinger, the guy who is just absolutely on fire right now for the Cubs, 3 for 10. Two home runs versus Trevor Williams. Guys, Williams has been listed as a starting pitcher like three or four days in a row now, and then he gets changed. One website has him on there. Another one doesn't. They have nobody listed. Just be sure to check that. Or maybe it doesn't matter because Bellinger's on fire, and it's going to be some Nationals pitcher. So, anyways, just wanted to let you know on that. Those are the best hitter matchups for today, and now it's time for the pitcher strikeout matchups. 
All right, let's move on to the arms now. We got five good pitcher strikeout matchups, and it starts with Mr. Brian Bayo of the Red Sox facing the A's. A's fourth highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days at 26%. Bayo, 75 Ks in 86 innings. In the last four games, he has 5, 3, 5, and 5. So he has been dominating lately. Uh, strikeouts, he's just kind of so-so. He's nothing special, but um, he has been pitching well. Next one, Justin Verlander, the Cy Young Award winner versus the White Sox. White Sox had the fifth highest K percentage versus righties in the last 30 days at 25.6%. Verlander, 63 Ks in 75 innings, but he's been much better at home. He has 36 strikeouts and 37 innings at home um, when he's in New York. So next one, Eduardo Rodriguez, the lefty facing the Royals. Royals, sixth highest K percentage versus lefties in the last 30 days at 26.2%. Rodriguez, 81 Ks in 76.2 innings. Uh, I have more to say about this game, and we'll talk about it later, so I'm going to hold off. Uh, next one, Kenta Maeda of the Twins. We know we're going back to this game. It's going to be both pitchers. Maeda versus the Mariners. Mariners, third highest K percentage versus righties the last 30 days, 26.4%. Maeda, 41 Ks in 36 innings. But in his last 20 innings, he has 27 strikeouts. So he's been missing a few more bats lately. And then the last one, the Mariner on the other side of that game. Luis Castillo versus the Twins. Twins second highest K percentage versus righties at 27.7%. And Castillo, 122 Ks in 112.1 innings. God, the Mariners suck right now. They're, they're just killing me. Absolutely killing me. Anyways, those are the best pitcher strikeout matchups, and now it is time for that pitcher report. All right, let's talk about some pitcher matchups today. We got 15 games. Let's look at this first page. We got some interesting matchups today. Uh, the Rays just announced they're starting Littell or Little, however you pronounce it, but he's just a bullpen opener like they like to do a lot. Um, we got some interesting matchup. We're going to talk about that Oakland and Boston game a little bit later, so I won't touch on that. Not a lot of high strikeout guys in these first eight games, except maybe you, Darvish. Um, he's pitched pretty well, except for on the road. He is a different pitcher, just so you guys know. So be sure to um, check that out. Um, Alcantara has been kind of turning around a little bit. The Cy Young Award winner for Miami. He's going against Dakota Hudson for the Cardinals, who has not pitched a lot this year. Um, yeah, so just some interesting matchups to me. Rich Hill's starting to fall apart a little bit. It's almost like he's over 40 years old or something. It's crazy. Um, but, yeah, he has a five expected ERA now. We got some high expected ERAs there down, over there in Colorado. My boy, Austin Gomber, I want to make fun of him, but I think he's given up exactly like two earned runs and two or three straight starts or something. He's done a lot better. So, And they only they only scored seven runs in that game in Colorado with the wind blowing out yesterday. That was kind of weird. So, anyways, I do expect more runs in that game in Colorado. But, um, yeah, those are the, the first eight matchups we got today. Uh, Urias and Kramer is a pretty interesting matchup. Baltimore, um, Baltimore needs a good start out of a, a starting pitcher. I don't know if Kramer is the guy to do it. 5.27 ERA, 1.33 whip is not that great. So, anyways, those are the first eight. Let's go to the next page and check out what we got. Carlos Rodon for the Yankees trying to get back on track and earn that huge contract. He started out a little bit slow. He's on my fantasy team, so I need him to pick it the freak up. But, anyways... Uh, we're going to talk about that Mets and White Sox game a little bit later. As you can see in the Cincinnati Reds game, we got Graham Ashcraft. He has a 5.45 expected ERA, but since he got taken off the IL and returned, I think it's been a few games now, he's actually looked pretty decent. So I don't know if he's changed it up or if it's just a couple fluky games, but just something to keep an eye on because he has pitched a little bit better. Uh, no pitcher yet match that I saw for the Nationals except for one website had Trevor Williams, like I mentioned, but right now I just left a TBD. Um, yeah, and then, we, and then we got Luis Castillo, the man on the mound for the Mariners. Hopefully he can get us a freaking win finally. So a big a big advantage there in Detroit for the Tigers to try to win a game after they lost yesterday to the Royals. But uh, And Verlander, he has been the stud at home. I will talk about that later. But uh, his splits have been just wild. So Uncle Charlie Morton, by the way, sorry, it's just another one. He's just like, he's like 85 years old, and he just keeps pitching well. I don't know how he does it, but he is pitching just unbelievable i'm surprised by it to be honest with you but anyways those are the pitcher matchups we got all the strikeout percentages on the right side take a screenshot use this go get some winners but let's go now i am ready for the best bets 
All right, game number one takes us to that terrible stadium in Oakland. We got the Red Sox at the A's. Red Sox money line minus 225. A's money line plus 190 with an over-under of eight and a half runs. We haven't done this in a little while, but we're doing it to start out. We have a money line parlay, and it starts right here. Boston Red Sox money line is the first leg of this parlay. Brian Bayo is on the mound for the Red Sox. Like I said, he's been good. He's been one of the better starting pitchers in the American League lately. He had a 2.14 ERA in June. That's just crazy. He's part of the reason why the uh, Red Sox are kind of back in this playoff race now. Um, he is an elite ground ball pitcher, 54.6%, which is in the 92nd percentile. Yes, he gives up 30% hard contact. That doesn't matter as much when you're giving up that many ground balls because they're hitting it hard into the ground. So um, he has never, ever, ever, ever allowed more than three earned runs in a start this year. So <laughs> the consistency has been there. Um, Oakland offense, we know they suck. I don't need to waste time on that. Bottom 10 offense versus righties. On the mound for the A's, how much Chuck can a Walda Chuck Chuck if a Walda Chuck can Chuck would? He is on the mound, baby. It is time for blast off. He has actually been more of an opener lately, kind of throwing about three, four innings every start, which is probably the best. It's probably too many innings for him. Uh, 1.84 whip, not good at all. A lot of that is because he has almost a 13% walk rate. Um, he gives up a ton of home runs, and guess what? When he gets taken out, he's going to get followed by another crappy pitcher coming out of that bullpen. So Red Sox offense, 7th in WRC+, 6th in OPS versus lefties in the last 30 days. I just think the Red Sox are going to cruise to win. I think they win by two-plus runs, especially with their performance yesterday, which was not pretty. Devers had the day off. I expect a fully healthy lineup. Them to come out and get a nice win in Oakland as the first leg of a money line parlay. Let's go check out that second leg. All right, game number two takes us out to Queens. We got the White Sox at the Mets. Mets money line minus 210. White Sox money line plus 180. Over under of eight and a half runs. God help me, but I am taking them. Second and final leg of this money line parlay is the Mets money line. Put that together with the Red Sox, you get plus 113. I love it. On the mound for the White Sox. I really only just bet this so I can say this guy's name. Tuki Toussaint. That's right. It reminds me of a croissant, which makes me really hungry right now. But Tuki Toussaint. I think I said that right. Takes him out. He's he's fine. He's only pitched 29 innings this year. He doesn't go deep into games. Um, he has, after him, is four or five innings of a bad White Sox bullpen. That's what I love about it. White Sox, 19-31 and 31 on the road. Not pretty at all. Mets offense are in the top half of the league versus righties in WRC Plus and OPS the last 30 days. I don't think they're going to need to score a lot. And do you know why? Because Justin Verlander is on the mound. And he has been really good at home. 2.57 ERA at home compared to a 5.18 ERA on the road. You do not want to tail this man on the road. Um, he has a 3.41 expected ERA. In my opinion this year, he's been a little above average overall, but at home, he's been good. He's been solid, so that's why I'm going to back him. White Sox offense, 22nd WRC plus versus righties in the last 30 days. And like I mentioned, they're struggling on the road. I like the Mets to win. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be a ton of runs in this game. The Mets can go off a little bit. Trusting the Mets is hard. I get it. But it's Verlander at home who rarely gives up runs. Um, so give me the Red Sox and the Mets money line parlay for plus 113 as my first bet of the night. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, let's go. We are going out to the ATL. We got the D-backs at the Braves. Braves money line minus 215. D-backs money line plus 185. Over under of 10 runs. This game was bonkers yesterday. 16 to 13. Uh, the Braves couldn't get into field goal position and kick that final field goal. I mean, that's literally what it seemed like, a football game. It was crazy. Um, we're back in the Braves here. Call it square. Call it whatever you want to do. It is the Braves minus one and a half on the run line at minus 115. Ryan Nelson takes him out for the D-backs. Oh, the voice is giving out early in the morning. Uh, he's a righty that gives up a lot of hard contact. 33.3% and not many ground balls. That's not a good recipe versus this Braves team. He has a 5.12 expected ERA, as you guys saw. It is perfect hitting weather in Atlanta yet again. That's why you saw like 29 runs yesterday. Um, I mean, I could talk about the Braves offense in every category, but uh, this is just easier. They're number one in everything. Number one in everything versus righty. So D-backs bullpen hasn't been very good either, uh, especially lately. So I think the Braves are going to score a ton of runs. 
On the mound for the Braves, this guy, man, I tell you, Uncle Charlie Morton, age 39, and he has been solid. I am just shocked. Only one earned run allowed and only 11 hits allowed in his last 19 innings. That's right, 11 hits in the last 19 innings. Imagine being almost 40, which I am getting close to, and doing as good as he is doing. It's just crazy to me. Um, he's really good at inducing ground balls and limiting hard contact. That's what he's counting on at this point of his career. 52% ground ball rate and 23.6% hard contact rate. Both are in the top 15th percentile for pitchers. Just impressive. I don't know what to say. I thought he was going to fade this year a little bit because he's 39, but he's not. Uh, D-backs offense, they've faded a little bit. I know they exploded yesterday. Other than that, in the last 30 days, they have dropped down to 19th WRC+. Plus an 18th OPS versus righties in the last 30 days. I think the Braves get a ton of runs here. I think the D-backs, I think Charlie Morton can hold down the D-backs long enough and they cruise to a nice, easy win. Maybe like a 7-3 type of game. I'm seeing maybe 7-2, 7-4, I don't know, something like that. So maybe Braves team total over if you get it at like 5.5 is not a bad option either. So Braves minus 1.5 is my second best bet. Let's move on to the final game. All right, we are going out to Kansas City. We got the Tigers at the Royals. Tigers money line minus 145. Royals money line plus 125 with an over-under of eight and a half runs. Who's ready for a player prop? That's right, baby. It's time. Eduardo Rodriguez over five and a half Ks at minus 120 on DraftKings. I absolutely love this bet. This might be my favorite bet of the day, to be honest with you. Um, I thought it was going to start out at six and a half. Eduardo Rodriguez, in his last two starts since coming off the IL, 14 strikeouts in nine innings. He had seven strikeouts in each of those games. He already faced the Royals, struck out nine of them. Nine. That's right, guys. We only need six. Um, he threw 88 pitches in his last start. Why is that important? Because he's he was slowly working his way back. 88 pitches to me means he's in that 90-plus pitch range now. So he's been stretched out. He's ready to roll. He should pitch a decent amount of innings in this game. Royals offense, already talked about it. Six highest K percentage versus lefties. Uh, they're just a bottom 10 offense in the league versus lefties, or really just against anybody. Righties, lefties, someone who throws with both arms, it doesn't matter. The Royals aren't very good. This, These two teams did score a lot of runs yesterday, I will say that. Um, I just can't imagine Rodriguez not getting six plus Ks. If he's throwing six innings, throwing 90 plus pitches, I, I just can't see it. I, I just, I am shocked. I might even ladder this up to maybe eight or nine. Just as a, a little fun for today. Just sprinkle a little bit. So, anyways, Eduardo Rodriguez, the lefty, over 5.5Ks, minus 120 is my final best bet. We made it. Let's check out that bets recap page. There it is. Red Sox and Mets, money line parlay at plus 113 on FanDuel. And then we got the square of all squares today. Braves, minus 1.5 at minus 115 on DraftKings. And then my favorite play of the day. Still all one unit, though. Eduardo Rodriguez over 5.5 Ks at minus 120 on DraftKings. There it is, guys. Let's get some winners. Let's enjoy some day baseball again. Some of these games start really early, like 9.30 my time in the morning. Um, so get those bets in. Let's enjoy it. Let's get some winners. Enjoy your hump day. Let's finish off the week strong. Thank you guys for all the support. Keep smashing that like button. Leave a comment below. Almost to 5,000 subscribers. It's just crazy. Thank you guys, and we'll talk to you guys soon.